ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the channel. Sorry, this video is um, late out in the channel. Um, today I went to the Morton game um, because, you know, I never, I never got picked for the Celtic game and I thought, you know, why not? Let's see a bit of football action. Um, and I couldn't even get a ticket for the Colt, the Celtic B team. So I said I got to the Morton game and, you know, it was decent result. We won, you know, the Morton won. Um, but on the point of Celtic, um, you know, before we get, as I said, guys, subscribe, like, um, Chris Sutton put it right again. This is on our board. Um, Chris Sutton didn't hold back, and I'm not going to hold back anyone. The, the you know, in the channel, the video um, after Celtic's final result. No way. Following a six-two home result defeat um, to West Ham. Uh, you know, obviously West Ham are the you know going to be the better side, of course. They're playing the Premier League. They like finished like fifth last season. Um, you know, it would be a, it's a miracle. It would be an absolute miracle. I mean, a miracle and a half if Celtic progressed, progressed into the champ in the Champions League qualifiers. Um, a bit, I mean, you could say today, you know, Chris Day excels, you know, I didn't watch the game, but I heard the parts of the game, you know, big lessons for young defence. You know, yes, I know it's another, just another friendly, guys. I know that. I know that. But Celtic took some much-needed lessons away from meeting with West Ham United. For David Moyes' side, who finished sixth, actually, in the Premier League last season, it was an opportunity to put some miles in legs of his, you know, um, his team. For Ange Postecoglou, it was a chance to see if his young defence could handle the rigours of a keeping of a Premier League attack quiet. <laughs> well, you see how it happened today, you know. In the end, we got slaughtered. Even returning next out, Armstrong Oakley scored. Um, in some respects, he came came away with the same concerns we had before the match, specifically in regards to the back. What did we take away? from Celtic's 6-2 loss to West Ham in the pre-season. Celtic defence needs to learn quickly, as West Ham prove. Mikel Antonio is a sensation of a guy, right, when he's fit. He's, he's been unplayable for West Ham, but he's often unplayable in another sense. Um, when he can get a run of games, he's an assist to David Moyes' team. However, Celtic did make it quite easy for him. Dane Murray, excellent on Tuesday night, was punished for a slack pass to Greg Taylor, who was pers who was pressured off the ball. For a second, Anthony Allison was way, was way high up the park. Uh, the pitch when West Brom, uh, West Brom, West Ham broke. Um, West Brom, I just said it again, West Ham broke, sorry. Stephen Welsh and Murray couldn't organise quickly enough in that lack of experience showed. And, oh, going through this, guys, you know, I've, I've wrote what I've thought of the game. Uh, I've seen the highlights. The third was a penalty and the fourth was followed by a similar pattern. Let's not guide the gay away, right? That's exactly what these games are for. I know I know people are gonna say that's what people are gonna say in the comments, right? That's what exactly these games for. But right The defence was absolute I mean bloody I don't know. That defence what you can get in a game for the bottom half of the premiership, like that the premiership side. Barkas, Rousen, Welsh, um Murray, Dean Murray and Greg Taylor. Greg Taylor, okay. But them three M four players there. Absolutely, they wouldn't get a game. They would not get a game for a bottom half um, Scottish Premiership side. I mean, Barkas, how the hell did we not? How did we get knocked out by AK Athens and Barkas was in goal? I, do, I, I don't believe that. I actually, I can't believe go back in that now and you believe that. You know what I mean? Ah, you know, Brian Christie can't do it all himself as well. He looked promising today. The parts of the game I saw, the difference in quality between Celtic and attack and Celtic and defence were pretty, pretty staggering to be honest. Um, and the ball, particularly in the set first half, Celtic looked bright and dangerous, you know, what we looked at on Tuesday night. Also, in word some net touches and held up play well. Christie and Nabada looked lively. A lot of good stuff was, was from Ryan Christie, a surprise pick on Tuesday night against Michelin. Christie's clearly trained well and his bleeding and his first team performance is great, you know, building up great performance and confidence. Um, confident and assured on the ball, he was plucking it from thin, thin air and taking it down coolly. Uh, his goal wasn't the most, you know, pleasing you'll see, you ever see, but it matters little. The it's the performance, you know, what happened, the main thing, and it's another good one from, you know, what I've seen the first half. Um, you know, after Celtic's defeat against West Ham, we're still no clearer on goalkeepers' situation. Get that here, clearer. Barkas, there's a picture of him. I don't know if I can get it up, but if I can, I'll put it up on screen, right? There is a bloody picture of him, right? He is, so he's there, Mickey Antonio is there, he's leaving that big space of the goal. I think Barkas is blind, I'm not even joking. Because he not see Mikel Antonio on the ball, and obviously it was going to be a goal, you know. 
isn't to say this game was going to provide a massive close about the future of goalkeeping position at Celtic. However, Barkas decent out in some teeth and give supporters some confidence. They even gave me some confidence to say, no, we might turn things around here. But, you know, and again, Barkas actually started this one pretty well. He made two different decent saves as West Ham applied the pressure in the early stages. But after the first goal, the confidence seemed to evaporate. He was beaten far too easily, as I said there, from the far near post, the near post, sorry, by Michael Antonio. It looked sluggish at a penalty and just generally seemed to go through the motions after having, the, you know, his net breached, to be honest, you know, so many times. Six bloody goals. Scott Bain came on at half time and it wasn't a significant improvement. Yes, these are all the friendlies, but after Tuesday night's goal, there's a real question marks over Barkas again. And not just Barkas. If you look back at Barkas, the only bloody keeper we've got left now is bloody Bain. I mean, come on. I mean, it feels unfair because it, I know it's just really a pre-season, but as the league opener against Hearts just creeps closer, and bloody the second leg of Michelin game is on Wednesday, we don't look any bloody stronger. We don't look like they're going to bloody beat Michelin Wednesday night. I really don't. I think Celtic will be lucky if we beat Michelin. Celtic will be very, a bit of a miracle if Celtic beat Michelin on Wednesday night. That's probably going to be the title of my preview, to be honest. Because it's absolute, it's an absolute joke from the board, high to the bottom of the board. I mean, it should have been actually done a lot quicker. And the Celtic, the Celtic board should have moved a lot quicker than getting and Postcogo in the door and getting signs in the door. Because look now, it got him in on the tenth of June. Well, they, how long are you supposed to get signs in from COVID and all that? How's he supposed to know the team and set up a team for trying to win the, back, the title back against Rangers? I mean, no, no, we've got Starfelt in, and, you know, we've got Abada in. Two signings. I don't know, it was Azzy or the Giddy and Liam Shaw in. Liam Shaw looks half decent. It's Azzy or the Giddy. He's not going to be the first team centre back, no way. Um, going into this bloody Michelin game, the second leg, you've got Barkas, Ralston, Welsh, Dane Murray, Greg Taylor. That's your defence. That's, that's your defence for you. Thank you, Celtic board. Thank you very much. Uh, it's an absolute joke because. Going into a, an, even a season opener, you know, you th against Hearts at Tynecastle, they're no mug team either. You know, Hearts are a decent side. Do you know what I mean? We need top class. We need top class in all areas. Goalkeeper, left back, centre back, right, right back, centre mid, cam, striker. You know, still, I know we signed a couple of players off Furi Hashi as well. I've been saying this for a week, weeks now. We were, we were so embarrassed last season. You know, as I, you know, as I explained from the videos we done last season, and left so the depleted from last season, the players that left in the summer, the entire squad in England overall. The entire the board um either the board I'm oh, sorry guys I've wrote something down here but it doesn't make sense sometimes. You know the entire squad um you know either the board back the manager completely or sack him and bring in a yes man near Neither, neither way we can be worse off. To be honest, our defenders look like they didn't know their positions. Constantly cut out, cut out. Be honest. Hopefully we get in a right back and another centre back this week and get them working to be ready for Tinkas, which I don't see happening in a million years. I really don't. And you know this comment says at the end after I tweeted that if not we're in big trouble. But I didn't say it's trouble already. Going to the Michelin game Wednesday night. If we done the performance we did Tuesday night. Against Michelin, we put them out of the misery, so say 3 now against Michelin on Thursday, Tuesday night there, right? Going into this game against West Ham, I would say fair play, okay, it was a, you know, you got to rest some of the players for the Wednesday the Wednesday game, okay, I get that, okay, I got them, right? But, 1-1 one, one against Michelin, Michelin take that for an absolute steal, they were absolute, they were out of the game, to be honest, Michelin in the game, to be honest, except from that goal, again, Barkas, it wasn't going to be a spectacular save as the commentators were saying, it's a save that a goalkeeper should be making. It's not out of the world. It's just got to be making, and he's there to get it, and he just moves out the way. I mean, oh, I mean today I didn't see the game, but the three things we're in video is we're in serious trouble. Barkas needs to go. We need a goalkeeper. We need a whole defence. I mean, we're in serious trouble for going into this season. We're absolutely. I thought we're unprepared for the Champions League. We're unprepared for the whole league campaign. So, as I said again. The back four, the back fa the back four, uh, Barkas, Ralston, Taylor, uh, Welsh, and Dane Murray. They won't never, they won't in a million years, get a bloody game for even a championship side. Never mind a bloody top, top, bottom team of the, bottom half of the chat, the SPFL uh, Premiership. It's an absolute joke from highest to bottom of the board. 
they haven't gave Ange Posco the time. They should have done it absolutely quicker than they should. Uh, than they had. They have. Um, this isn't in on a manager at all. Uh, this is on the board. The whole situation. What he has to work with. You know, this isn't on Dean Murray, a young centre half, giving the ball away. He's put in a position where he's held up. He's he's up against a, a streetwise top class Premier League forward, um, who gave him and Welsh a real lesson. It's a learning curve. But Postecoglou hasn't been. I've, hasn't been given the tools. I said it before the game on Tuesday night against Michelland. It's going to be tough. It's a Champions League qualifier. He hasn't been given the tools at all to work with the manager. The board should have acted quicker. He said it himself, Ange Postecoglou, in the, the press conference after. Um, it was men against boys. It was so wide, you know what I mean? The gap, West Ham were in different, a different class, and it wasn't West Ham's best team. They have four or five players coming back which are going to make them stronger. The gap was so big. He has very little to work with, to be honest, Ange Postecoglou. And Wednesday night, if Celtic get through, it's going to be an absolute miracle. I'll tell you what, and I'm going to do my preview probably Monday or Tuesday, because uh, I've got a wee couple of videos planned that day. Um, it would be an absolute miracle if Celtic go. Um, absolute miracle if Celtic uh, get through Mich Michelin. Uh, well, it's up. It's up the chief executive Don McKay, who's had a slow start. He needs to get the wheels in motion. Maybe this will be a good thing in the long term. How can you say it's, it's a good thing after you get in bad six two in your home ground, home park? I mean, you got eighteen or something like that, thousand in Celtic Park, and you that's the way you treat your fans coming back. I was expecting the Celtic to win. But at least put on a full performance, it would say, do you know what? With, you know, fair play West Ham. It's still fair play West Ham because we get bloody battered at the half. Absolute battered at the, the game. Um, now, this is maybe it's a bit much, yes. Celtic were absolutely dire at the back today, conceding six goals at home. However, it's a friendly, and the difference in levels between pre season games and how Celtic played in Europe was marked. It's also worth being bearing in mind that the boys essentially fielded two separate teams today. Of course, Sutton's right. As I was talking about a minute ago, the Ange Postecoglou needs more backing, but it's repeated the bot by the boss that it's a frustrating situation all round. Player transfers at general are taking longer than normally would. That and quarantine rules are making even more annoying affair. Unless you sign a player hy hyper locally, <laughs> chances are you won't move it through self isolation procedures. We've seen that now with obviously Kyle Go, <laughs> Furuhashi, and Carol Starfelt. Still, Sutton's voice is one that you'd expect the board would pay attention to. How they act as anyone's guest, to be honest anyone's guess but anyway guys thanks for watching that is me uh, the number seven on the channel of course i was just talking about basically the three things you learn from celtic 2 west ham 6 um thank god it's the end of the pre-season because i can't take this on oh it's just a pre-season game but we'll see what the excuse is on tuesday night or even going into any saturday's game against a week today against hearts first league game of the season it's an absolute joke from farce absolute farce you seen what happened last season? Twenty bloody something plus points behind Rangers last season. It'll be even better this season. I'm telling you, absolutely telling you. Right, anyway, guys, thanks for watching the video. I've just discussed what I thought of the board, to, what I thought of the today's game. To be honest, um, and what I think is going to happen to Celtic in the future. To be honest, if we don't, they don't act quicker. Uh, but yeah, guys, subscribe, like, share the video as per usual. I'll see you guys in the middle very shortly.